Give me your soul now! Who or what the hell are you? I am the ghost of this glory tone radio. You sure are one ugly ghost. Why is everybody calling me ugly? You're ugly. I know you are, but what am I? Ugly. I know you are, but what am I? Okay, get out of my radio. 100 bucks or your pitiful soul. Hell no. How about some fire, Scarecrow? <laughs> you can't hurt me. <laughs> I'll give you one more chance, but now it's $500 or your soul. Take a hike, ghost. I'm not giving you squat. You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. So I'm turning you into a jack-in-the-box. A what? <laughs> what have you done? He got what he deserved. Now, as for you, I'm not asking for your soul. I'm demanding it. Not today, spirit. Take a look at this. This is a ghost catcher movie camera. It's the end for you, ghost. I'd ask you to show me your good side for the camera, but you don't have a good side. Smile, you're on candid camera. No! It's sucking me out. Stop it. Stop it. Are you okay? I'm sorry, I was late, Buzz. <sighs> Man, thanks, Tickle. I owe you big for this. Here's a hundred bucks for getting me out of that mess. One hundred bucks? Wow! Thanks, Buzz. That's very generous of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that the hundred bucks I gave to the ghost? Buzz! Buzz! Let's all hope that the ghost of this radio is finally gone. Because I got a lot of work to do on this. All I can say is, it wasn't fun being a buzz in the box. <laughs> Man. Okay. In today's episode, I'm going to take off the uh, bezel here, take off the uh, grill cloth, take off these uh, decorative screws, and we're going to strip this thing <laughs> and make it pretty again. Hopefully, we can finish this radio in part two here. I'm going to have to glue that. They got nails all over here. Let me show you that. Just in this section here, there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And they're all flush with the top of the cabinet. They didn't even set those. You can see one here. It's just flush with the uh, top here. Same with this one. I wonder why they didn't set those. I don't know. On this section here, you can see another one here, here, and here. I don't know about that. Should I keep it like that? Maybe it adds to the spookiness and creepiness of this radio that maybe I should just keep it like it is. I don't know. 
Let's take a look at the chassis and I'll tell you my plans for it. Okay, I got a lot of work to do on this chassis here. What I'm thinking is, I may uh, restuff these two electrolytics here. I'm not crazy about restuffing stuff. I used to do that in the past, but uh, this one here, since it's so old, maybe I should keep the look of it. It looks like uh, these things have been leaking here. Yeah. This one too. It might be fun to take this apart and take a look at how these early electrolytics were built. And if possible, maybe I can restuff these somehow. But we'll have to take it apart and take a look at it. Here's that uh, open can ohm resistor here. It's 1K, so I'm gonna replace it with this. Oh, look how cute it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to remove this and put that in its place. And there's some uh, capacitors in this can here. If you take a look at it, it looks like some wax. came out of it. Maybe those capacitors overheated and that wax oozed out of it. Now this is a resistor here. It had this cover over it and I opened it up and uh, let me show you what that looks like. If you take a look at this. I look like a dog bone resistor. There it is, you can see it there. It's just white there. It's uh, supposed to be 50K, but uh, we'll have to check that, see if it's any good. So the first thing I think I'll do is uh, remove this, this two tenths of a microfarad capacitor can, uh, dig out what's in there, and maybe put this in there if it fits. Might have to put it sideways. If it doesn't fit, I'll find something that will fit in there. Get over there. And to take this off, this is riveted on here. I'm gonna have to grind this off. What a bonehead I am. I should have just uh, drilled out the uh, other side here, so. What a bonehead. Let's get the other one here. There we go. There it is. Sort of looks like uh, those uh, Philco Bakelite blocks there, huh? Yes, yes, uh, that's, that's right. That's one capacitor in there, it's 0.2. Let's take that out of there. Well, I can't use the world famous buzz extractor on this because there's no holes to uh, pop that out of there. So we'll just heat it up and see if it comes out easy. Let's try a corkscrew in here. There it is. Now look at that, that's a part of the terminal there. I want to reuse these, so. We'll just get this other crap out of here. We'll see if the capacitor fits here. Gonna have to put it in this way and somehow fix these leads here. 
Probably have to extend this lead here, but uh, I think that'll work. So. Now, what are your plans? While I start working on this, you guys can watch me strip and refinish the cabinet. Let's hope that after it's finished by tonight, it'll look wonderful. Well, I finished restuffing this here. I was doing that while you're watching me slaving away on that uh, cabinet. I got some footage of that, so uh, let's see that right now. Well, here's what I ended up doing. I cut two pieces from a terminal strip and uh, put them in here. And I put a grommet around here. So you see them sticking out here. Then I poured epoxy around here. 
so that won't move. So the capacitor is going to work like this. I'm going to use one lead to go through here. Since the other lead's not long enough, I soldered a wire here. Now I can cut it here. 6 that through the hole. Oh! Stick this wire here through the hole. <laughs> sort of like that. I gotta move this over it more. Okay, I got the wire tucked in underneath there. It's going to the terminal. And the other one's going to the terminal. The wire here, I don't want this to short out to the case here, so I'm gonna put some liquid tape over here. Okay, next on the agenda are these electrolytic caps here. I took out this left screw here, but the right one is stripped. So it looks like I'll have to cut that out. Okay, we'll be the first to take a look at this since it was installed in 1930. Wow! wow. Looks like copper. This is the ground here. Those look cool or what? Cool! What a lovely pair of turtle doves. Never saw copper electrolytics before. Oh, how nice. I think maybe I can cut this top off it. Restuff it. When you work on these old radios, you see something new every day, don't you? Let's see if we can take this nut off here. Another nut there. Maybe I can pry this uh, this part here off. Looks like some type of rubber or something. It's hard as a rock. I'll have to ponder this off camera. I'm going to cut this top off here, right on this line here. That way, if that comes off, I can clean out the goop inside. And I think that uh, because there's a lip there, I might be able to fit it back in there. Oh, brother! I don't know. We'll just go for it. Go ahead, try it. Holy crap, look at that. There's still liquid in that. Ew. Who would have believed that? That smells great. It smells like a, a limeade drink. What did Gomer Pyle used to say? Clean this mess up. Well, according to the manual here, that solution is uh, borax and boric acid. Yes, I think I'll drink to that. Let's see if we can uh, finish this. Right. 
You don't see this every day, do you, folks? Look at that. That's the aluminum. Aluminium, and not aluminum. Now that is cool. Cool. Here's the other one. Now you can hear that. Still got liquid in there. I didn't notice that when I took them out. Who would have thought that? I think I'll double my pleasure and double my fun because I'm going to cut out can number two. Here we go. I gotta go potty. I got these two capacitors here. It's gonna be in the can. I got these all wired. I think these will work pretty good. Let me show you what I did here. Let me get a close up of this. I used this nut and the threaded piece right here. From this piece, you know, I cut it right there. You can see right there, that's where I cut it. And I put a nylon screw up here where the uh, negative is going to be. I didn't want this uh, negative to ground out to the, uh, to the can here because the negative goes to the center tap and then it goes through a 1000 ohm resistor. Then it goes to chassis ground. So I wanted to eliminate any problems of shorting out here. And the positive here is hooked up to this uh, terminal here. I think that looks pretty good. It's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. It's wonderful, isn't it? That was wonderful! Wonderful, wonderful! Let me show you the cans. Whoa, Nelly. I need to put my sunglasses on for this. Oh, that's better. Whew. Man, look at that. Those things came out good, huh? Nice! Beautiful. I wonder if I can see my reflection in here. Let me see here. <laughs> Holy Jack in the Box. So I'm gonna put those in there. I'll probably use this thing here, reuse it, just stick it in there. Then this goes in here like this. Goes in there perfect, see? Because it's got that lip on there. A little bit of silicone around the edges, and that'll hold it in there until it needs to be changed again. And they're going to go like that. And this is what holds those down in there. Since these cans aren't grounded, I'm not going to use this insulator here. I'll just put that on there like this, but I think I'll paint this copper color too. It's gonna look pretty good in there, I think. I like it. I like it a lot. Wonderful. Okay, next I'm gonna remove this and replace it with uh, this here. It's a 1K resistor. I'm just gonna drill this out and use one of the holes and mount it over there. I'm also gonna do this can here. There's only one cap in there. It's a 0.5. So I'm gonna drill that one out and do that off camera. Here's the 0.5 D 
detector bypass cap. You see it's uh, it was leaking some wax here. I'm just going to heat it up and see if I can pull this uh, section out here. Bingo. One cap. Smells musty. Well, there it is. Is that all there is to it? Okay, I'm ready to put these caps in here. I didn't have a 0.5, so I had to put two together in parallel, and these add up to uh, 0.51, so we're going to go with that. I put a piece of wood in there, so I'm just going to put this in here. Put these tabs down. Well, so far, it's looking pretty good, huh? Got this one done, these two, this resistor, this cap here. Now there's three caps in here. I'm gonna do that next. Okay, I got it out of there. There's a lot of wires on there. There's 10 wires on there. I thought it might be interesting just to check this to see if these things are any good. So we'll just hook up one of the leads to the uh, can, which is grounded. We'll check this one here, measuring 1.8 microfarad. Now the caps in here, they're supposed to be two fours and one five. Let's see what this one is. 1.2 microfarad. I don't know. Is you uh and good or uh and bad? That one's nothing. All right, let me open that can. Okay, there's the three caps. I decided to put in just all 0.47. So there's three of them there. Put some wood there. It's just so this has something to lean on when it pushes back. And it's gonna go together like that. Just gotta bend these tabs over and we'll put it back in. Okay, I've got the uh, last box I worked on here all wired up. You can see all those wires on there. So I think it's time we test this. I'm pretty sure there's no mistakes, so we're just gonna power it on and cross our fingers. Everything is hot on here. Careful, it's hot. So this is on, we'll just Go up to 30 volts. 60. 90. 100. About 115. Oh, 
just say that I, I know better than, like, don't deny my lovely wife her, her annual pilgrimage to Viva Las Vegas. She loves it. Well, it still works. Over the past few days, I've been playing with this radio, and it seems the, uh, the middle portion of the band is dead. And I can pick up stations on the low end and three or four on the high end. Anything from 700 kilohertz to around 11, can't get anything. Now I've replaced all the capacitors, except for this one. It's a point zero zero one, and this has got like uh, 50 picofarad. One of these is in the uh, the third transformer, and here's another one in the second transformer. And I've had a hard time trying to get a reading out of this. So what I'm thinking is, maybe I can take this can off and this can off and take a look at that uh, capacitor there. I'm just curious to see what it looks like, if it uses a mica or what. Now in order to do that, because of the layout, I'm gonna have to take this antenna coil out first. Well, I guess it's called the first RF transformer because these are very tightly uh, assembled in there and I can show you that right now. That's a hell of a tight fit there, and it's got this uh, big wire harness right there. I don't know if that can could come out of there, but uh, I'll try. If I'm successful, you'll see it. If I'm not successful, then I won't show it. How do you like them apples? Well, there's the money shot. Now I can test the coil. Well, I've been trying to figure this uh, antenna coil out here. What I thought was the primary is actually the secondary. So this is the secondary winding, 4.1. So I've been trying to measure the primary winding. When I'm supposed to go to ground, and it's supposed to go here. There's nothing there. So I started to look around here. There's a wire there. Let me get you a close-up of that. So you see that wire down there? This one right here, see it? Now it's not going anywhere. It should come up to uh, this terminal here and ground itself. And I kept thinking, did I do that? So I watched my video as I was unsoldering one of these terminals here, and there it was. There it is. I can see it. Is that supposed to be like that? Because if I didn't do it, is that the way it came out of the factory? Now there's no way I can get this out of here. The only way to do it is uh, drill this out because that's holding that in there then I could just lift that out mm -hmm. now they say that drills and coils 
do not make good playmates. Well, here's my coil. Here's my drill. Let's see if I can make these play together here. Get that thing out of there. You're waiting for me to screw up, aren't you? Yep. Got it. Looks like that's caught on something. I need to examine this without the camera in the way. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it. You see one end is hooked up okay. And there's the other end. I'm gonna see if I can scrape some of uh, this uh, insulation off and then we can measure from here to here. Okay, let's uh, hook up one end to that side. And now we'll measure the primary coil here. Hopefully there's a, a reading here. You're worse than an old woman. Don't get so nervous. You're getting too old. You're not up to it. 35.3 ohms. Could this be why uh, it was retired early and shoved in the attic? I don't know, but I'm going to attach an extension wire here and then solder it up here to the ground. Okay, I got it soldered in there. I used some of my 40-year-old uh, bus wire back in my uh, old computer days. I was a computer tech. So now that's connected to ground. Now we should see the secondary 4.1. Now here's the primary, the way it should be. 35.5. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna power it up. Let's just consider it an experimenting with buzz segment. Who knows what's gonna happen? Okay, I think we're ready here. This will probably squeal like a pig here. But uh, let's just try it and see what happens. Got the antenna hooked up to it. Let's just uh, power it up here. 60 volts. 90 volts. 100 volts. I got something. I'm not very good at my job. At the lower part of the dial there, we're not getting anything but static here. It's probably because this is out there, it's not covered. And before I was getting about three, four stations, now I'm getting one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can get it in the can. Try it again. Well, I've installed the can. So it's back in there. This volume control is still loose here. I'll put that in there later. I just want to test this. Hopefully it'll work. 30. 
60, 90, a 110. Okay, that's on the little part of the dial at 620. Now, I never got any stations past 620 until 1190, so I'm missing about two or three stations. Let's see what happens here. There's one station. That's two. That's three. I'm getting a lot of interference because of my light up here. Fluorescent light. It is 970. It's coming in. I don't believe it. That fixed it. That wire that wasn't. Ah. All right, that's it. All right, that's the top of the dial. <laughs> you can see all those stations that picked up now. It's just incredible. Buzz, you did it again. A wonderful, a wonderful. Well, that should do it for part two here. I really thought I could finish this, but uh, you've seen the problems I had. Imagine that this radio never worked right. From the factory. It's one for the books. Or maybe it was that ghost. Maybe that's why it's haunted, huh? Oh boy. Well, I'll tell you what. I will definitely finish this in part three. So until then, this is old Buzz signing off. Good night, everybody. Stay tuned for Dickel's Corner next. Hey Buzz, I'm practicing my comedy act and I want to try out a new joke. You want to hear it? Okay, I could use a laugh after that ghost turned me into a jack-in-the-box. What a nightmare that was. Okay, just pretend you're in the audience at the comedy club. Okay, I'm in the audience. A doctor walks into the exam room and finds a husband and wife sitting there. What seems to be the problem, he asks. Well, every time my husband opens his mouth, he can only sing, says the wife. Interesting, but I'd like to hear it from your husband, replied the doctor. So the husband shrugs, opens his mouth and sings, Well, she's all you'd ever want. She's the kind I'd like to flaunt and take to dinner. But she always knows her place. She's got style, she's got grace. She's a winner. She's a lady. Interesting, says the doctor. Let's try that again. The husband once again opens his mouth and sings, What's new, pussycat? Whoa, what's new, pussycat? Hmm, once more, please, says the doctor. Again, the husband opens his mouth and sings, My, 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 Delilah. 
Why, 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 Delilah? I've heard enough, says the doctor. Well, what's the diagnosis, doctor? I'd say it's an acute case of TJS. Tom Jones syndrome, says the doctor. Is it rare, asked the wife. The doctor replied, it's not unusual. <laughs> that was pretty good. Here, Dickel, I think you earned a zero bar. Gee, thanks, Buzz. Oh, boy, there's nothing better than eating a zero bar, washing it down with a cold beer, and eating Funyuns for dessert. Hehehehe. <laughs>